Well, today is our first devotional as we start out a new year, 2023. It's Monday, January the 2nd, 2023. And I thought it fitting to begin this uh, year by spending a week talking about attitude. Maybe there's nothing more important to starting a day, a, a week, a month, a year, that exceeds the importance of our attitude. Whatever this year will be, your successes, your setbacks, your trials, your persecutions or tribulations, your attitude will determine the outcome as much as your intelligence, your effort, and your associates. So I would contend that as followers of Jesus Christ, we should reflect in our attitude, the attitude of Christ Jesus. So that's my starting point. And I want to go to Philippians 2, 5 through 11 and read through these verses which describe the attitude of Christ. Let this mind, or we could substitute the word attitude here, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not think our considerate robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant and coming in the likeness of man and being found in the appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Attitude of Jesus Christ, the mindset, the display of who he was is clearly depicted in these special verses in Philippians 2, 5 through 11. I, I believe attitudes are learned. So if you have a bad attitude, you can learn a good one. And if you've had a good attitude, you could digress and learn to have a bad attitude. For most of us, we've arrived at our normal mode of operation concerning our attitude from early childhood. We are born with a given personality. Uh, maybe a real spark or a partial spark or whatever you want to call it, which was then shaped in our home environment by our parents, our siblings, and the environment around us, surrounding our home, the neighborhood, and in some cases, the foster care, the orphanage, or wherever it was we were raised. We may not have understood at age three or four that we could choose to be happy. We could choose to be sad. We could choose to be angry, upset, moody, or full of joy. Even now, many of us may not believe we have a choice in this matter, but we do. And so let's attempt today to start this out by discovering how Jesus had this great attitude of submission and humility and allow that to be the basis for the transformation of our attitude in life. So I want to note some special things ab about the verses we just read that tell us about Christ's attitude. Beginning in verse 5, he had a certain mindset. Let this mind be in you. The mindset was that he carried in an identity that formed his behavior. Now think about that. That's going to be huge as we walk through this week as we talk about this. He Christ carried a, a mindset, a mind, a mindset that his he had a certain identity, and that identity formed his behavior. Who he was caused him to act in a certain fashion, and that mindset follows in the verses. So in verse six, who being in the form of God. <clears throat> equal with God. Well, you and I aren't that. So at this point, the, the analogy may 
have some separation. But I want you to notice that it's very important to know who we are in God. And we'll talk about that this week. But Jesus had an identity. He was in form, in, in being in form of God, being equal with God. He was fully God and man. That formed his behavior. He made himself, in verse 7, of no reputation. Well, reputation seems to be a pretty hot item. You can make a lot of money from your reputation uh, uh, as a celebrity on social media, um, maybe millions of dollars even. I, I read a story of a little kid making $267,000 last year from social media. So he has a reputation. And all of us are concerned about a reputation, at least with a certain crowd. That is that we have status and name, or repute. We have standing. And it says he made himself of no reputation. And in verse 7, again, he took the form of a servant. A servant is someone who performs duties for others. And they're devoted and faithful. <laughs> I'm talking about attitude now. And, and so we're looking at Jesus, and here he, he takes the form of a servant. He has the attitude of a servant. Remember who he was. He was the Son of God. He takes the attitude of a servant, the form of a servant. In verse 7, he came in the likeness of man. He wasn't man, but he came in the likeness of man. In image, God became man. <clears throat> Emmanuel, God with us. And remember, he left the splendor of heaven. He left everything in, that he was and who he, he was a part of as the triune Godhead, and he became man and dwelt among us. Oh, wow. So he lowered himself and was found in the appearance as man in verse 8. He took on human form. He began to experience what all of his creation of humanity experienced, temptation, trial, persecution, accusation, hatred, anger, misunderstanding. He went through the human experience. He experienced the humanity of man as God. <coughs> In verse 8, he humbled himself. Attitude. Attitude. Humbled himself. It's just everything against Nike, isn't it? <laughs> just do it. Be your own self. Meism, men, you're important. Stand up. Vote for yourself. Be counted for yourself. And Jesus, was, he was the opposite. He was modest. He was unpretentious. He was meek. He was servile. He was un, unprivileged. And yet he was the son of God. In verse 8, he became obedient to the point of death. Apostle Paul said, I die daily. Death on a cross, subservient, conformed to the will of his father, unquestioning. So we're looking over the attitude of Christ, and I got to ask myself, Les, how do I measure up to this? And it seems, in my opinion, many times I've fallen short, and it seems, in my opinion, that the American Christian have developed attitudes that are more reflective of our culture than of the nature of God. I don't know if that's true of peoples of others, uh, other nations. I, I don't know them, so I don't know if that's true there. But here in this Western culture, most Christians I know have adopted the, the attitude of our, our world. We're like the description of the Jews in Judges 21-25. Everyone did that which was right in their own eyes. And that definitely does not reflect a Christ-like attitude. And that ought to call us to prayer. And so, God, I'm praying for me and for those who watch this video. While Jesus is an example, we can follow and we are filled with the Holy Spirit in order to reflect and conform to the image of Jesus Christ. And I, I would one for one confess that I need some help in my attitude then. And I'm asking you to help every one of us with our attitude so that we would reflect a Christ-like spirit in the world, our world, that we live in, work in, go to school in, go to church, have small group, 
participate in athletics and musical events, etc. Lord, we need to reflect you, and we need help doing that. Forgive us where we've uh, served ourselves and where we've reflected our, our sinfulness instead of the righteousness of Christ in us. And empower us to live godly in Christ Jesus, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God's grace over you today has peace reside in you. And hey, let's have an attitude. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. God bless.